We're in Detroit. Say hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. hey we're here on the trip. This is our in Detroit vlog. Micah is walking. <gasps> My baby is walking. He is walking when we get to Detroit. Oh my God. The city where I was born, my mother. I'm gonna visit her grave while I'm here. My hair looks wild. I'm excited, everybody, because this is my first time ever being able to locate my mom's burial site here in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm just excited, because I've never been there. And uh, just to put you up on like what's going on, um, I'm 32 now, but my mom died, I think when I was three over it was a tragic you know death or whatever she OD'd on heroin and I didn't know her I was a baby when she died from it and now I'm 32 and I get a chance to locate her burial site um it's just exciting I'm excited so thank you God for putting me in this situation to be able to come here and go and locate my mom's burial site because I want to take her some flowers and um, it's going to be more to come once I locate her because uh, that's just special to me. So I'm just excited. I'm on the phone right now with the cemetery and they're going to tell me. So I'll be back. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, get that. Uh, Said or whatever, because I'm excited. I want to share this with everybody. I just called and I was on hold. I was trying to locate my mom. It's crazy. I don't know why I'm not getting the message. Um, yes, I am. I'm just excited. Um, I mean, long story short, like I was a baby when she died when I was, I was three when she died, and um, this now I'm able to come and come to the church and. Um, like I'm getting ready right now at the hotel, and now I'm gonna come down like today. <laughs> Y'all see that I just spoke with them. They told me that they are practicing social distancing. That is fine. I am cool with that. And um, she gave me the instructions on how to do it when I get to the cemetery. And she was even excited for it because I'm excited. So, <laughs> like I said, I'm going to go to my mom's grave site for the first time in my life. I'm 32 years old and she died when I was three. And I don't remember her anything, but this is very special to me. This is something that has sat with me uh, since I was a little girl, you know, since I could understand what was going on in my life. All right, everybody. So this is Symphony, and I'm back. And like I told you, I'm excited because this is the first day that I get to, in my life, I get to go and visit my mother's gravesite. So I'm going to pick her up some flowers, and I'm going to go take them to her burial place. And like I said, uh, we're gonna head out the door at the hotel and I'm excited. So that's why I got this big smile on my face because this means a lot to me. Because this is something that I've been wanting to do all my life. I've always wondered, like, wow. Like, I've never been to a grave site. I've never gotten to see, you know, where they laid her or anything. What's up, everybody? So I got the flowers. I'm gonna get in the car. I just came out of Michael's and I'm gonna get in the car and go to the cemetery. I'm so excited. Um, so, all right. Um, see y'all guys later on in the video. All right. Um, 
grave site and I'm crying because I'm so happy. This is my first time ever, be, you know, being able to go out there. This is special to me and I've been wanting to do this all my life that I've been on this earth to understand. We're here to the grave site and um, yeah. Yeah, okay. My heart is beating so fast. Oh my God. Your mother? Huh? Yep, we're going to your grandmother's yeah, my mother. grave site. I've never mother. been there a day my in mother. my life. Ma, I love my mother. You do? You love your grandmother? Yeah. That's great. It's awesome. You got your glasses, your sunglasses? Oh. Okay, so like I said guys, we're out here and this is my mom's grave site. Wow. Okay, so y'all can see. She's somewhere in here. Right here. Where's her? She has nothing. She has, so this is what we have here. This. They said my family was so poor they couldn't even get her a tombstone. So this section, not to, not to, you know, be no, be real with like me, because this is. But so this, this section, is, everything from. If I was to go a straight road, a straight line, straight to the road, uh -huh. all the way back to the fence, and all along the fence to the back corner, uh -huh. this section used to be our social services section. So from about, I want to say 89 to about 93, 94, this is where they put anyone whose family couldn't afford a to uh, bury them to do a, a burial. Um, and every one of these graves has at least two people in it. I don't, like, say, I, I, don't, I don't say that to hurt you. I just No, no, no. I need to know the know. truth. I'm 32 years old. I'm her baby. So, I was the youngest when she died. I've never, I don't know her. I don't remember her. All I know, they told me they were so poor they couldn't even get her a tombstone. And I just asked God to put me in a situation where I could get my mother a tombstone. So, but for this session, because so many people that are in this session couldn't afford them at the time, each grave has a little concrete marker so she's at W795. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'm not mad at you sir you can tell me the truth. Is there any way like if a family member came back around and could afford to do it the right way? The right way? I wish I could tell you yes. Unfortunately this section because there's multiple burials in each grave there I can no, never. There is no way to move something. In fact, we actually had another another family ask, um, and I, I don't know the names because I, I wasn't the one dealing with the family, but I was told that another family who the it was either the child or the grandchild had become a semi-famous rapper was willing to pay a considerable amount of money, but this these graves are technically owned by the state, and the part of the state's stipulation for using one of these graves is that they cannot ever be dug up. Okay. So while we can place a headstone down, we cannot do a disinterment and reinterment. Okay. I wish that that wasn't the case because we have had families that have asked about that and I understand that it's not the, not the most comforting thing. That being said, Part of my job here, I'm one of the family service counselors, so part of my job is to help families that want to put down headstones for loved ones who were never able to get them, things of that nature. And I'd be more than happy to explain to you how that process works. Everybody, and I'm learning that when she was buried, she had to be buried by social services because this is for people that their family couldn't afford to bury them. And it hurts, She's right here, and this is all they have for her marker. Um, W79, that's it, but 
No, it's W795. But I, um, I'm happy to be here. Um, it hurts to know she's down there buried with other people. It hurts to know that, you know, at the time they couldn't afford to give her a proper burial. Um, but I know God will work it out. He'll work things out. And I'm just going to keep praying and talking to him about it. And I'm, I thank him for getting me here this far. They're going to go get me a, um, they're going to go get me something I could put my mom flowers in. <laughs> 